the head's broke. You're watching Impact on BBC World News. I'm Yelda Hakim. A reminder of our top story this hour. New satellite images suggest North Korea is rebuilding a rocket launch site it had promised to dismantle. The images were taken two days after talks between President Trump and Kim Jong-un in Vietnam broke down. This comes as the United Nations has published details of an emerging food crisis in North Korea. They say the country recorded its worst harvest for more than a decade. Well, Olivia Enos is an analyst at the Asian Studies Center of the Washington-based Heritage Foundation. She joins me now via Skype. Thanks very much, Olivia, for joining us here on the program. Let's just first talk about uh, this uh, rocket launch site that they promised to dismantle. No surprises that North Korea has done this. Absolutely. This is not a uh, surprising action at all, especially considering how things went truly south uh, at the Hanoi summit. And so, you know, North Korea repeatedly goes back to either testing its missiles, testing its nuclear weapons, um, and, and threatening activities when it doesn't get its way. And I think that this really is not surprising at all. Of course, we're seeing uh, these reports that at the Tongchongri, also known as the Sohei uh, missile rocket launch site, is now being developed. And it looks like they are actually adding on new features to it that would make it capable once again uh, to pose a threat to the U.S. This is this is extremely, extremely dangerous and is another reason why the U.S., given how little progress it's made either in Singapore or the Hanoi summit, should really return to that maximum pressure strategy against North Korea. What sort of message does this send uh, sort of a week uh, since that failed summit? Yeah, so I think, you know, obviously Hanoi did not go the way that we anticipated that it would, but I think that North Korea, even in coming to the summit, may not have been sincere in its promises for denuclearization. I think there's a chance that Kim Jong-un thought he could come to the, the summit table in Hanoi and similar to uh, Singapore, not be pressed to take those practical steps on denuclearization. But as became clear from the press conference, President Trump said that, you know, uh, U.S. negotiators were pressing them not only to close Yangbyon, but also some of those other facilities that, you know, are little known or North Korea has concealed from the U.S. And so this is a really bold move on U.S. negotiators' part. Um, and so I think that North Korea is starting to feel the pressure. And of course, they indicated that they wanted sanctions entirely lifted in exchange for incomplete denuclearization, which was an unreasonable ask. Uh, Olivia, while the world focuses on this summit and, and North Korea's nuclear program, the UN has now released this report talking about a, a food shortage uh, and a harvest uh, a, a problem in North Korea. Tell us a little bit more about that. So it looks like North Korea's harvest is down by something like 9%, according to the UN. And they're attributing this in large part to um, some of the typhoons and weather-related disasters that have taken place. But frankly speaking, um, more than any weather-related disaster, Kim Jong-un and his regime pose the greatest threat to the long-term stability and health of the North Korean people. Because in fact, North Korea spends something to the tune of $1.3 billion developing its missile program and makes only a $111 million or around $111 million in a request to the World Food Program. It's clear that North Korea has the resources to actually feed its people, but yet again, the brutal Kim regime decides to deny their people a fundamental human right to eat. Olivia Enos, uh, thanks so much for joining us here on the program and for your analysis.